Hey, what's up, guys? Toogie here, back again with another episode of my Hartford Whalers franchise month series right here on NHL 18. How are you today? Me? Oh, me, you ask. How am I doing today? I'm doing great because in this episode, we begin our title defense. The magical run that was the previous postseason. We beat the New York Islanders, the defending Stanley Cup uh, champion Islanders, in the cup final. And then we have one of the better off seasons, at least in terms of morale. It might not have been the biggest acquisitions, but I feel like we had ourselves one hell of an off season. Maybe, just maybe, drifting a little bit towards, as I didn't mean to go to player morale, but maybe we're drifting just a little bit towards rebuilding hockey town territory. We're at least closer to that than I feel like we've been in any other point in this series. And we acquired David Posternock and Mitch Marner at a previous point. <clears throat> I'm going to leave that in. Because who wants to edit? Anyway, point being, with this lineup, again, is it the strongest on paper? Absolutely not. But we have seen what this lineup can do. Aside from William Carlson stepping in, this is the exact same lineup that won the Cup last year. Of course, we just had that revolving door of talent for the most part, trying to figure things out. Go go figure that in both of my current ongoing series, the bottom six, it's been a little bit questionable throughout the course of this series, but we'll see what William Carlson can do this year. Other players worth keeping an eye on, really the top line in general, Lucas Leidecker, we of course still have him set up as a sniper because of that 99 offensive awareness. He could be an amazing two-way could maybe even be a power forward, a sniper, a playmaker. Last season, he was more like a playmaker, setting up Nathan McKinnon, who led our team in points, despite the fact that he's a playmaker, <laughs> although he played like more of a sniper. So you, you just re never really know how these guys are going to play throughout the course of a season. But yeah, regardless, let's, let's get this show on the road, regardless of what this team is set up to be right now. I am, I'm optimistic. Point being, I'm also a little bit distracted. The previously uh, mentioned construction. These people are out here from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And it's 3.55 in the afternoon. So, yeah, I'm just waiting for a gigantic bang outside. Which, half the time, I mean, I'm not, I'm not even convinced it's construction. Half the time, I think they're gunshots. My neighbors might be dead. I might be the worst neighbor in the history of a neighborhood. Well, no, actually, no, not not even close. There, no, let's. There, there have definitely been people worse than me. Let's just let's let's just put that discussion to bed. <laughs> We're moving on, damn it, because the start of the regular season is here, and we start off our wonderful title defense on the road against Colorado, and we lost three to two. In overtime, can we beat the Florida Panthers, though, is the question. How I wish there was a cup or, you know, a banner-raising ceremony. I don't believe there is. Let me know if I'm wrong, because from now on, we'll have to watch the banner-raising ceremony, if it is, in fact, a thing. But I could have sworn. I, I asked the same thing for 17, for NHL 17 and NHL 16, and it was not a thing. It was gone from the game. So I don't want to waste too much time, because as it is... I've already wasted plenty of time. Hell, in this episode, I've already rambled about how I'm a terrible neighbor, which, yeah, I've already rambled about how I like our team. Obviously, I like our team. We won the cup last year. So this is already, as Rumble is not happy about his lack of ice time, I mean, you're a legend and all, but I saved you from the unemployment line. You have no reason to be complaining whatsoever. Now, me, on the other hand, I have reasons to be complaining because at the end of the first month, we have a 4-6 and six record. The Connecticut Whale with a 6-4 and four record. Not exactly the start that you would have expected. Eight points through ten games. Eight points back of the St. Louis Blues. So let's maybe just take a look at this lineup. I don't know if I'm going to make any major changes. I tried to hold off that burp too, by the way. I know it wasn't very audible, but it was there. I tried one of those new Oreo mystery flavor deals. It's Fruity Pebbles, by the way. So whether, you, whether you, I mean, you know, whether or not you like Fruity Pebbles and Oreos as a combination, I don't really know. It's, uh, the aftertaste is a bit weird. What is with me in rambling today? Jesus. So we get a look at some of the point totals. I'm not too upset with the top line. Phil Quick, 
needs to get that offense going. You could argue it'd be worth changing him to a playmaker, perhaps. I mean, he is the perfect two-way, though, and he's actually a first-line talent. I didn't notice that. Sprong with four points. That third line is struggling. In the plus-minus department, that third line is struggling big time. So let's see, four goals for Radish. What do we want to do here? I'm probably going to bump up Watson, but I don't want to have to send down Radish or Jones to do it. You know, I know Radish has the goals, but let's go with Watson on the third line, Radish on the fourth. How's the defense looking? That second pair is just hot garbage. <laughs> so that's that's good to know. I mean, Tuzolino, as as was pointed out when we won the cup, looking like a regular Mike Commodore. He, he's struggling a little bit. We'll put him on the top pairing with Appleby, I guess, because Appleby is pretty much untouchable on that top pairing. We'll see how Provorov and Gary Harkins perform. And actually, how is one Adam Larson doing? More morale-wise. Not happy with the ice time. I was, I was afraid of that. So because of that... Let's go ahead, and I'm. It, it sucks that I'm going to have to do this, but again, a big challenge this season is going to be keeping Adam Larson happy. So he's already on the top PK. We'll see how he does on the power play. Petrolinen's doing all right. I mean, it's not really the goaltending. It's not really the fault of the goaltending so far. It's just the team in front of him. Maybe there's a little bit of a Stanley Cup hangover going on. It's only the first month of the season. We're not in panic mode just yet. We'll sim the month of November. But if the struggles continue at that point, then yeah, we might have to worry just a little bit. So as we continue the sim, I get to uh, sit here and try to figure out what the hell I'm going to ramble about next, right? My God, what an episode it's been already. We've established that I'm a terrible neighbor. Mystery Oreos are flavored as Fruity Pebbles. What else? That I love this team, but of course I do. That was, that was pretty much it, wasn't it? We passed 7K subscribers. So thank you for that. Literally found that out. I mean, it's funny. Somebody just asked me on Twitter, like, hey, are there going to be any videos today? It's like, yeah, I'm working on a Hartford video right now. When I say working on a Hartford video, I imagine most people are thinking, oh, okay, he's just editing it. Nope, recording it right now because of said construction. But still, just saw that we passed uh, or hit 7K subs. Hopefully passed it by the time this video went up. But we hit 7K subs. I thank you guys very much for that, of course. What took you so long? I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking again. It's it's still ridiculous. I know it's you know beyond cliche as we're definitely going to be calling up Kip Trafford here, as we don't have to worry about him getting claimed off of waivers. But I know it's very cliche to be like, oh my god, I never I never expected to you know to get to this point. That's the truth though. <laughs> like legitimately, I had no reason to ever believe that I would, you know, hit 7K subs. And, you know, 7K subs within two years, I don't know if that's good. I don't know if that's bad. I feel like for an NHL channel, it's pretty good. Maybe it isn't. Who knows? But still, it's ridiculous to me that two years on, I'm still making videos and I'm on Twitch like that. Why? <laughs> I still don't get it. I still don't get it. Like I said, two years ago, if you were to tell me, hey, you're still going to be making videos and you're going to be, you know, you're going to be in the whole content creator deal for EA. No, you're stupid and you're wrong. Get out of my face. Yet here we are, right? Here we are. We've won a cup with the Whalers. That might be the peak accomplishment, despite the fact that we have now lost three straight games. Quit breaking my heart, Hartford. I tried to make that work. It didn't really work, but that's okay. As we get Warren Dirksen back from injury, Trafford, Kip, have fun back down in the AHL. As we'll fix up these lines again with Mr. Dirksen. Mr. Dirksen. Da -da. Take Bob Menard out of the lineup, and then we'll take a look at how this team is doing up to this point. Because I don't even know our record. 12 and 11. Hey, we at least have a winning record. We played Boston and Montreal in back-to-back -back nights. It's a home game against the Bruins, then we fly to Montreal. Not too bad. But if we were an actual Western Conference team, like this game thinks we are, that's a rough go. That's a rough go. 
16-6-1 record for the Connecticut Whale, by the way. So 12 wins on the year. And that is good enough to be tied for fifth. We are currently 10 points back of the St. Louis Blues. So not quite ideal, really. Not ideal. Now, here's the thing with Leidecker. Again, 4 goals, 12 assists. Last year he had 18 goals, 46 assists. So the discussion, or the argument, is should we change him to a playmaker? But then you can argue, well, why change him to a playmaker if he's already essentially playing like a playmaker and putting up points? So let me know what you think. Should we change Leidecker's player type if his numbers continue to be so heavy towards the assists rather than than goals, despite the fact that he has a great rest shot and 99 offensive awareness. Like I mentioned too, 91 defensive awareness, 88 stick checking. I know some people think that, you know, if you change someone to a two-way, they're not going to put up as many points. It's not necessarily true. He could still be a big-time point getter for us, and he is a very well-rounded player. Nathan McKinnon, five goals, nine assists. It's not terrible. Nolan Patrick actually has the most goals on that line. Of course, he's not much of a power forward. It's probably better suited for him to be a sniper or a playmaker. And he's doing all right so far. Of course, Dirksen's been injured. Phil Quick, still not tremendous. 15 points for Sprong. 7 points for Max Jones, still a minus player. 8 points for Carlson. 4 points for Austin Watson. Taylor Radish is still doing well. Hmm, you know what? I didn't think I'd be doing this. So maybe try this. I know some people are like, quit changing the bottom six. You gotta remember, guys, there's no chemistry system in this game. It doesn't matter how much you change players around. There's no such thing, at least that I've seen, that's been 100% confirmed that there's some sort of chemistry system on each individual line based on the player type and how many games they've played together on the same line. I would love for that to be a thing. How great would that be? And that's one of the points I was kind of saving, one of the topics of discussion I was saving for a quote-unquote wish list video when it comes to franchise. How good of a system would that be? Of course, back in the day, NHL 2004, we had the system where everybody knows your top line, playmaker, sniper, power forward, and you're golden. And you get that extra bit of a chemistry boost. Maybe, I think it was even an overall boost to that line. How sweet would that be to have those boosts be back in the game? Where, you know, maybe it's a, a one-point improvement. A one-point improvement to every attribute if you play them on a line with similar players of similar skill or at least someone of a similar role. How great would it be for that, you know, the longer you play someone, like if we keep this top line together, they've been the top line for a season now. The longer you have a top, or the longer you have a line together, they get a chemistry boost and then their, you know, their attributes go up. Something like that. I wish it was a thing. As it stands, it's not. Unfortunately, Gary Harkins is really shit in the bed right now. Ribeiro's not doing too much better either. Goaltending's good, though. So again, it's just the team in front of those two that are somewhat struggling. I'm still not going to panic. Richard Panic. God, that's an overplayed joke. And make too many changes. Jesus Christ. Note to self. Don't. I ate one Oreo. Literally one Oreo. That was it. And it's enough to have, like, the hiccups and just stop it. Stop it. So I don't recommend Oreos if you're going to, or even a single Oreo, if you're going to be uh, speaking in any kind of capacity of anything that's even somewhat important. I suppose if you're just sitting around talking to someone, you know, just in general, you know, in an Xbox party or whatever, hey, it's fine. As and speaking of not fine, Tony Andrews goes down to injury until mid-February. That's not good now, is it? However, <clears throat> that does mean Mr. Trafford can get called up or Henrik Oberg. And looking at the stats here, I mean, we'd have to risk losing him to waivers, but I'm going to call up Mr. Oberg. And we'll give him a chance here at the NHL level. We'll see what he can do. He'll be in on the fourth line with Carlson. And Connor Roberts. So let's see. He's a lefty as well. Perfect. Who's going to replace him at the AHL level? You might be asking yourself. I don't know. It's going to be Bob Menard. Bobby Menard. Right. And we're going to drop him straight down to the fourth line. But hey, he gets to play. So it's fine. It's fine. Trafford's actually doing relatively well. 
as far as progression, putting up points, good stuff. Let's go ahead and keep simming here. To the end of the month, can we get our 20th win? Yes, we can. We've won three straight games, actually. And aside from that loss to Chicago, we've done, and Montreal, we've done fairly well. Of course, I bring up the fact that we're doing well, so we immediately lose to the New York Rangers 4-2. to two. That's just how it goes, I do suppose. Oh, let's take a look here. We'll scout our defense for a month. Can we end the month on a pair of wins? No, we can't. We do get the win against Edmonton, and we lose to Buffalo. So we stand at a 21-15-1 record as of January 1st, 2025. The Connecticut Whale doing really well, 23-10-4. Not too shabby. As we are back into a playoff spot, every team has played 37 games. However... We're 10 points back of St. Louis and 16 points back of the Winnipeg Jets. We won this division last year. I don't much like our chances this year. 16 points back of the Winnipeg Jets. Let's take a look at their team. I'm intrigued to see how they are doing so well. So let's look. By the way, Kosarenkov, 82 overall. Ivan Kosarenkov. I mean, I'm not sure how he's putting up those points, but he's doing it. Jake DeBrusque as well. Good for them. Good for them. Two players that we pretty much felt the need to let go of. Chris Tierney is there as well, as is Scott Lawton. It's the it's the Anaheim Whalers, apparently. I'm happy for them, though. I don't regret getting rid of them because we won the cup without them. Anyway, Winnipeg. I mean... The top line, of course, we knew about. Kyle Connor's great. I don't quite see, especially with that fourth line, which includes a defenseman, how they are doing so well. I don't get it. The defense is good. Goaltending, good with Connor Hellebuck. I don't quite understand, though. Nick Bjorkstad is injured, in fairness, but shocking. To see that the Winnipeg Jets are just running away with the division title. We're not, not really running away with it. They are only six points ahead of St. Louis. St. Louis is ten points ahead of us. You get the point. We're going to keep simming. I don't think we'll make it through the entire season in this one episode. Because odds are we're going to have to try and make some changes. For the moment, I'm content to just keep simming with the same personnel. At the very least... When we have Andrews come back from injury, we are going to have something to worry about. But for the moment, we're okay. It's just a matter of finding the right combinations and having, you know, players not underperform. We have won four straight games. Make that five. It's a nice little winning streak there. We're going to lose to Minnesota or have to deal with an injury. There it is. Casey Ribeiro out for a week. Not too bad, considering the last player to suffer a concussion was Andrews. And we'll be calling up. Is it Evan Wyman? Hey, I somehow remembered. I have no idea how. Evan Wyman will get the call up. Of course, that makes Phil Crosby the top defenseman on the AHL team at the moment, which, good for him. I think he will have to be a lifer at this point. He's he's basically our captain. He's not technically our captain at the moment because we did sign Chris Rumble, but he's pretty much our captain. And uh, speaking of Chris Rumble, I guess who's getting top line minutes, buddy? Welcome to the team. You get to play with the Phil Crosby. Extra attacker Bob Bernard, and I mean Phil Crosby, obviously. Let's just change that around right there. Beautiful. I guess... Well, actually, we're winning games, so I'm just going to leave it. We're going to lose. Yeah. At least we lost in overtime, though. Pity point. Thank you, EA. You're too kind. Uh, Casey Ribeiro's going to be back already, so I'll spam the B button. And he is back to 100%. So maybe now is a good time? Like, that's the thing. Every time I every time I think, like, okay, this is a good time to take a look at the team. I mean, look at what we've done this month. Three losses, only one of which has been in regulation. We're up to 28-16-3. With three games to go in this month. This has been a great stretch for us. We're up into second. St. Louis, what's happened to you? Oh my god. They've picked up five points in the same amount of time that we've picked up 16. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we were at 43 points. They were at 53. 
and now we've overtaken them by one point with the same amount of games played. So either we've just really turned it on, or the St. Louis Blues have shit the bed. Regardless, though, the Winnipeg Jets, damn, 14 points clear at this point in time through 47 games. They have eight more wins than us on the season. So it's going to take quite the effort to catch up to the Jets, although we do have a game coming up against them here very shortly. So what we'll do right now is we'll take out Wyman, we'll send him down, put Casey Ribeiro back in, which, I mean, watch out, Ribeiro. Wyman could very easily replace you if you continue to underperform. I don't even know how he did. He at least wasn't a negative. The Danish defenseman. We'll get him back into the lineup. Unfortunately for one Chris Rumble, oh captain, our captain, he is going to have to be the one that gets taken out of the lineup because I can't, I just couldn't possibly. Well, I could, I could take Bodine out of the lineup. That might be, you know, it might not be the best idea. And I mean, Banting and Stutzel are pretty much locks at this point, even though they don't have the best potentials. But, you know, can't quite get rid of them. Phil Crosby's leading the team in points. And they have a five point lead on the Belleville Sens. Not too shabby. All right, so let's keep simming. Let's keep going. As long as we're winning, I'm not panicking. We're going to lose all three games because I said that. We beat Detroit 2 to nothing. Can we beat the Winnipeg Jets? We lost, but we lost in a shootout that is crucial. And then we beat Arizona. That was a really good month for us. What was that? One regulation loss, three overtime losses. That's not bad. One regulation loss in the course of a month. That is crazy. What a stretch of games for us. And now here we are in February, 30-16-4 on the season. The Connecticut Whale up to 32 wins already. And we'll take it pretty much a week at a time as we head towards the deadline. Of course, I'm not sure what changes we're really going to have to make. We lose 2-1 to the Islanders in the rematch. That's unfortunate. But then we crush Tampa. Tony Andrews is back. Now, this is what I was worried about. We do beat the Calgary Flames, though, 3-1. to Back-to-back -back wins over Tampa and Calgary. So, Andrews is back. Now, we have to decide what to do, because there is only one spot for him. We're still one point, one point clear of the Blues with a game at hand. We're one point, guys. One point. Now, that's, that's proper English. So, let's take a look at this team. How is Oberg done? Eight points? Plus two on the fourth line? That's not bad. Henrik Oberg. Doing fairly well here. William Carlson hasn't done much. He's really not happy about being on the fourth line. Which is understandable. Connor Roberts. He's happy with how this is going. Taylor Radish. Austin Watson and Max Jones are doing okay. Went to click over there. So, I mean, William Carlson's obviously a great player to have. But right now, we have a fairly good third checking line. When you talk about having Oberg on the team, he has great faith. We could easily have Andrews, Oberg, and Roberts. I feel like that'd be a pretty decent line. Not that I want to get rid of William Carlson. But I don't quite see how we're going to keep him happy. Let's take a look at Tony Andrews here. Still low elite potential at 24 years old. Still listed as a sniper, although you could argue changing him to a two-way would be better. Seven points, a minus four in how many games? 32. Okay. So that's really the question. Is what do we do with that fourth line? Of course, if we try to keep William Carlson happy on the PK, that could hurt our penalty kill. Our ideal penalty kill right now is probably Lydecker, McKinnon, Quick, and Watson. You could even throw Oberg and Roberts in there instead. So Carlson as a you know defensive player, I mean, you could argue Roberts and Oberg are better defensive options because they're actually better skaters. Carlson's a bit better offensively, however, with 14 points this year. So let me know what you guys think because I, I'm, I'm feeling like that third line should be locked in. What do we do with the fourth line? Let me know down in the comments. We have four, uh, we have four players, although Connor Roberts is pretty much safe. I mean, still offensively, I don't like his game, but as far as defense and physicality goes, he's a plus player as well. I think he's safe. So Oberg, Andrews, Carlson. 
Two out of three can stay. Let me know in the comments who should stay. All right? That's pretty much the main question we have to decide is what does our fourth line look like. Leidecker as well, putting up points. He, he is more of a playmaker despite being set to a sniper. Again, you could let me know down in the comments your argument as to whether or not he should actually be a playmaker or if we should just leave him as a sniper because he's putting up points. So, yeah, I mean, really, two-way as well, but, yeah, let's be honest. I mean, he's pretty much good where he is. Nathan McKinnon, same thing. Could switch into a sniper, but he is putting up points as a playmaker, so maybe we don't have to change anything. And Nolan Patrick, same thing. Sniper, playmaker, just leave him, change it, what would you do? Warren Dirksen doing very well, 31 points. He's good to go. Phil Quick starting to get his game together. He's up to 30 points. All right, I'm cool with that. And Daniel Sprong doing very well this season as well. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much the only question. I guess, do we change the player types on the top line? And what do we do with the fourth line as the YouTube app opens? Okay. Did I just lose my in-game progress? I swear to God, EA, thank you. God, I blamed EA. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that would have been more of a Microsoft issue. What the fuck was that? I kind of want to see what it was going to load up. I'm intrigued. It probably just would have been the home screen, but... Chalk that one up as the first. All right. <laughs> anyway, on defense, Applebee's doing well. Tuzolino and Applebee. Damn, that's that's the combination for sure. Uh, Proveroff and Harkins are getting it together too. So on defense, I think we're pretty much good to go. We'll keep an eye out on Casey Ribeiro, who is apparently complaining about ice time. I mean, Casey, I, I like you as a defensive D-man. To be honest, I should probably just change him to a defensive D-man, even though he does have some offensive capabilities. Larson's not complaining about ice time anymore. You got to remember, though, Ribeiro, uh, there's somebody here on the team named Evan Wyman, even Phil Crosby. I'd be willing to give Phil Crosby a chance, especially, too, with him playing on a line with Larson. Ribeiro, you you better just stick to playing hockey and keeping your mouth shut. Petrolinen having a Vezina caliber season, a 936 save percentage, and that's really all we needed was for the offense to get going because the goaltending has been spectacular. 944 for Subad, 936 both of them with five shutouts. Subban's been incredible. A return to form from our uh, former starter. It's looking good. Like I said, we got a couple of things to figure out. But for the most part, we're looking good. Of course, we know the AHL team is doing well, including Spike Rowe, who's going to be an NHLer very, very soon. He's already a depth forward. We could easily see Spike Rowe turn into a fourth-line guy. But I think at the very least next year, He's on our third line. Like, that's a guarantee. Spike Rowe will be on the third line, which might, you know, will result in some changes, obviously, between the bottom six, and we're already looking at making at least one change. The bottom six will continue to develop. Spike Rowe could be a really solid player for us. Kirk Avery is already a fourth liner. Great defensive category. I mean, he could be called up now, really. He's having a good season. That's the other things I wanted to check. Of course, we know Kip Trafford. Also, potentially, fourth-line caliber already. Just between Avery and Trafford, we have options. This team's looking good. I mean, it took, so, it took some work, especially with some of the trades we made to get this team to look like this. But I'm definitely liking what I'm seeing. Of course, the goaltending, Kuhlman's actually doing a little bit better. I like what I see. And now that we've gotten our offensive game going, I think we're in line for a pretty strong season. Now, again... We're in a very similar spot where you could argue we'll go out and get somebody who's higher overall. But we won the cup last year with basically the same team. And it's looking like we're going to be a playoff team yet again. So I don't really feel the need to go out and make these drastic changes. I mean, we have the eighth best record in the league at the moment. Our offense is what was struggling early on, although we do have a top 10 Goals for per game ratio. Our goals against per game is the lowest in the league. Like, that was the issue. Look at the difference. I mean, six fewer goals than Winnipeg. But still, that's incredible. That is incredible. 
98 goals against in only 53, or in 53 games. Only 98 goals against in 53 games. That is a tremendous, tremendous record, especially considering the team with the most goals against has 176. So the defense and goaltending was never the issue. It was just point production, and we've turned that around. We have a top 10 power play as well, 23.1%. Our penalty kill might be the league's best, and it is, at 88.1. So again, and I know I say... And again, or so again, all the time for emphasis. But damn it, it's emphasis. Emphasis. It's a, it's a Josh Peck thing. I'm sorry. Drake and Josh just corrupted me. Oh, my God. What a show that was, huh? We were talking about uh, we were talking about old cartoons and everything on Twitch the other night. Of course, that wasn't a cartoon. But when I think back to good shows from the late 90s and early to mid-2000s, Drake and Josh, it's up there. It doesn't quite hit Keenan and Kel level for me, but it might it it's it might be second best, and that's not a bad thing. Anyway, because we don't really need to go out and make any of these major changes, at least not in my opinion, I think we're good to go. That will pretty much do it for this one. So again, let me know what you would do with the bottom six. If you have any other suggestions, feel free to let me know, but Again, I feel like... Damn it, I did it again. Again, 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 again. I feel like Herb Brooks over here. Let me know down in the comments if you would do anything differently or if, you know, it is the right decision to just move on with this team. This was a fun episode. I enjoyed this one. I hope you did too. If you did, feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. If you're not one of the 7K subs that have already subbed, what's the matter with you? <laughs> I should be saying, what's the matter with you to the 7k people who have subbed? Because what the hell? I'll, I'll never understand it, but I thank you nonetheless. Links are in the description to my Twitter and Twitch. If you don't watch me live on Twitch, I'm live most nights, typically later. Normally anytime between 10 and or between 9 and 10 p.m. as a starting time. That's Eastern Standard Time. And, you know, sometimes we, you know, stream till 3 in the morning, 5 in the morning. I know it's not the best schedule for everybody, and I get that. But maybe over the winter, especially once this damn construction's over, I'll start streaming a bit uh, a bit more during the day. But I'm trying to balance YouTube and Twitch, too. So, you know, it, it is what it is. Have a good day. Have a good night. Have a good life. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Goodbye.